A person once asked me, what is it that bothers you so much about religious people? I answered, they don't in general, just certain types of religious people. They replied, well, what kind of religious person bothers you then? I said, there are two kinds. A religious person with a bomb in their hand, and a religious person with a ballot in their hand. And the word bothers is probably something of an understatement in both cases. So what is it that bothers me so much about religion? People can't understand sometimes why I take issue with it the way I do. They say, Rob, why can't you just live and let live? Why can't you just leave people be? Now, interrupting some little old lady's sewing circle or setting off firecrackers in the middle of Sunday service isn't exactly my style. Contrary to what my militant atheist video might have led some of you to believe, I don't go about picking fights with the unsuspecting or the unwilling. Only those who, as I said, are willing. It seems to have escaped many people's notice that most of my videos are, in fact, response videos. But what is it that I'm after? Kicking sandcastles? Pissing in people's Cheerios? Well, no, actually. You see, I find that religion is in competition with good reasoning and that, from time to time, gets society as a whole into trouble. Now, YouTube abounds with well-spoken scientific atheists who argue religion on the grounds that it offers false claims. I myself argue on these grounds, as nothing really is so important as whether or not a claim is true, the consequences notwithstanding. But accepting for a moment that it is the case that religion offers no real truth, the next question is, so what's wrong with a false belief? What do I care whether a person believes falsely? Well, the problem is that people are, as often as not, jerks. Some people hate Jews, some hate fags, some hate Republicans, some hate liberals. All of this prejudice needs a justification, even in the mind of the bigot. If you ask a person to explain their disapproval of a thing, and they have absolutely no response, even a bad response, even the most talented of double thinkers will realize that their belief is utterly without substance. People come to prejudice by many roads, but seldom, if ever, by reason. Prejudice is rarely the product of careful and considered reasoning and evidence. Some positions are just indefensible, but if you admit a collection of ideas or values without proper scrutiny, that is, without subjecting them to the rigors of logical evaluation, or, more importantly, if you accept before the fact that they are infallible or as near to infallible as such things can be, then all you have to do is work out how these ideas can be used to support your preconceptions. Often enough, the holy books do your work for you. Homophobia, for example, isn't hard to justify on religious grounds. If you're a Christian, a Jew, or a Muslim, slavery is justifiable as well, so long as you don't beat your slaves to excess. All manner of truly reprehensible behaviors can be justified because backdoor access to your mind has been granted to priests, holy books, and a gut feeling you sometimes get when you pray. And if one can only twist these things to act as support for your own selfish or morbid desires, then further reason isn't really required, and reason and ethics have all been bypassed. Religion, and the social psychology attendant upon it, offers people a powerful mechanism by which to justify a number of behaviors. They needn't seek out the relevant values and arguments which justify or rule out certain behavior. They need only find a verse of scripture that says that that behavior is okay. Of course, most people in Western society reject a great deal of what their religion demands of them. The notion that apostates should be put to death as it says in Deuteronomy, or that brides not found to be virgins should be stoned to death on their father's doorstep, are both ideas that civilized people happily ignore. And this is rather the point. Punishing apostasy or stoning adulterers are practices which are simply no longer in vogue. People don't grow up with these prescriptions because they were long ago abandoned for their obvious moral bankruptcy. But other reprehensible ideas are still in fashion, and religion does the job of propping them up just as well as it props up rummage sales and 12-step groups. Most atheists, I suspect, hold that most theists don't develop their moral code through a course of intense theological reflection or a regimen of scriptural study. Each of our moral codes is largely dictated to us by the culture of our birth. I don't mean to suggest here that religion makes people bigots. In fact, I have to accept that religion can be a moderating influence at times. But its power to occasionally attenuate a person's urges is grossly outmatched by its power to possess a person of a sense of self-righteousness. Helping a person abstain from drugs or rampant sexual promiscuity is a shamefully small victory for religion, especially when overshadowed by its ability to provide the ideological support for something like flying a plane into a building. It also provides a group identifier, which can often be risky when certain values are attached to the groups involved. Bridging the gap between judging a person to be inferior and deliberately harming them for it isn't much of a stretch on a worldview that holds that such inferiors positively deserve an eternity of torment. More than that, if certain values are permitted to take residence without proper evaluation, a person might feel justified in acting defensively when those values are threatened. For instance, the fatuous argument that gay marriage somehow threatens the sanctity of heterosexual marriage justifies a person in voting to bar the way to happiness for many homosexual people. 
Of course, this argument is a rationalization for a more deep-seated and socialized repugnance for homosexuality and has next to nothing to do with biblical teaching. Yet for many, the Bible serves as a flimsy but functional rationalization. But consider, if we lived in a world in which bad reasoning didn't come prepackaged in books so many of us towed as sacred and infallible, just imagine what that would be like. If we didn't live in a world where some are chosen and the others are damned, imagine how we would perceive one another. If we didn't live in a world in which most people believe in an afterlife and cosmic justice, and instead most people accepted that we have one life to live and that we only have one shot to get it right, just imagine how we would treat each other. If we didn't live in a world in which so many abdicated their reason and swallowed whole the beliefs handed to them in pill form, imagine what things we might be compelled to discover. If we didn't live in a world in which so many absconded from moral reasoning and did only as the more unlettered among us command after torturing a confession from a text poetically dictated by an imaginary being to one of our primitive ancestors, just imagine such a world. That world is the reason I take issue with religion, the world that could be, a world in which bad reasoning isn't bottled in holy books and rendered immune to criticism, a world in which every failed argument and bigoted outlook lies exposed to the withering power of reason. When religion is truly separated from how we conduct our affairs, when it becomes a purely private matter and doesn't manifest itself or impress itself on the way a person votes or who and how they decide to kill, when a person's metaphysical positions no longer interfere with the lives of his fellow citizens, on that day all fall silent on the issue of religion, but not before. This is the Godless Heathen, signing off.